Alright, hello guys, and welcome to my fourth fall outlook. Today, we're going to be talking about my temperature forecast, precipitation forecast, and overall forecast. This was highly, highly uh, suggested by other viewers. They really wanted to see this, so that's why I'm making this. But before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also check out our social medias, which are in the bottom of the description and in our pinned comment. Now, right now, we are looking at our precipitation forecast, our official precipitation forecast, which has changed a little bit here. We can see we do still have some drier than normal conditions there for Northern California. And according to my analogs and a lot of other models and stuff like that, we do have a signals that are showing us that we could have some slightly below average precipitation for this area. That's why I'm calling for this. And also it wouldn't be too abnormal in recent history to have these types of conditions. I wanted to mention that there will be some, I'll be showing analogs and NOAA's forecast towards the end of this one. So once my forecasts are done in this video, don't stop watching because there will be some other information and I haven't shown those yet in any of my fall outlooks. Now we do have slightly above average precipitation from Arizona up into Utah, into some of the Southern Rockies there, and then back down into Oklahoma and then up into the East coast kind of a in in the southeastern United States we do have above average precipitation. We do have an area of moderate shade of green there from southern Wyoming into eastern Colorado and into northern New Mexico, a little bit of Oklahoma and Texas there as well. I expect some stormy conditions there and we've been having that type of pattern, so it wouldn't be too crazy to say that it carries over into the fall time. We do see that happen a lot where things sort of carry over but change a little bit and that's what I'm expecting here. We do have another shade of moderate green there for Texas into Louisiana, southern Arkansas into Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina there. And this is kind of where I think a nor'easter pattern could set up. My analogs are really showing that there could be some nor'easters this fall, especially into November. So we'll be talking about that once we get to the analog portion of this video. But that's kind of part of the reason why I expect above average precipitation. Keep in mind if a hurricane hits anywhere on this map that it will instantly put you in above average precipitation. And that's not something that I can necessarily forecast. So that would change things a lot and it's not really predictable. So here's your temperature forecast. We're looking at warmer than average conditions, basically from the Rockies westward, but down into a little bit of Texas there as well. So Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, California were also involved there, but some of those Rockies as well, like I said. That's where we're going to see slightly above average temperatures. In the slightly above average, you won't really see too much noticeable changes from your normal. You might notice it in some areas, it might not in others. But in that medium shade of orange there for Arizona, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and a little bit of Texas there, you will notice the above average temperatures, I believe, for the four corner states there. That'll be pretty noticeable and it will be pretty persistent. Now we do have an area of slightly below average temperatures from the Dakotas down into Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, and all the way into the Gulf states to Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, and basically northward into the Great Lakes states. That stops a little bit after the Appalachian Mountain Range. And I think that the coast will have average conditions there. So Florida up on, up the east coast, basically. I expect average conditions for you guys. So you won't really feel anything abnormal at all for you guys at all. There for New England, though, we do have slightly above average temperatures. And this is what I was calling for in my last forecast, and I'm still calling for that. I think that you guys will have slightly above average temperatures, especially earlier on. And this is going to lead to a little bit of a later fall. We'll talk about that in the overall forecast, which we're going to right now. Now, you can see this has changed quite a bit over the last few videos. And I've changed up some things as we've gotten a lot closer. And I've been able to look at analogs as we've seen our sea surface temperatures change and really set in. Once the sea surface temperatures are within a you know two to three month range, we don't expect too much change. Uh, that'll that'll affect too much so we do kind of have a great idea of what's going to be happening as far as oscillations go so I have a much better idea now for the fall time obviously we are expecting warmer than normal conditions obviously for California Washington Oregon Nevada eastward into the Rocky Mountains again you saw that in the temperature forecast very warm conditions there for the four corner states for that orange shade then we are expecting mountain snow for the Rockies. Obviously, that is nothing abnormal. I just wanted to mention that, that we're still going to see mountain snow during the fall, especially late, like we always do. 
Then I'm expecting a cold start from Montana down through Wyoming, Colorado, Kansas, Nebraska, the Dakotas, Missouri. So it's going to be colder in September and October, but once November comes around, a lot of that cold will taper off and it won't be quite as cold for those regions. Stormy conditions for Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas. There, We're expecting some low pressure systems to come through uh, to your north and probably lead to some thunderstorms for you guys. Nothing too crazy, but it is going to be Slightly above average precipitation for you guys. And then into Colorado, I expect a pretty moderate above average amount of precipitation. Then we see Arctic invasions late there for that purple region. So the Dakotas through Minnesota, Iowa, Missouri into the Great Lakes states. That's going to be late, like I said, later half of October into November. I expect some Arctic invasions for you guys. As I was calling for below average temperatures, we're going to start seeing Arctic invasions as the winter pattern starts to set in in November. We saw that in 2014 to 2015. We saw that in 2013 to 2014. So I'm expecting it this year again as those are some of my top analogs as well as my temperature forecast just adds up with that as well. We're expecting nor'easters late for that light green region. Again, you'll see that in my analogs when we look at the precipitation region or uh, portion of the analog portion of this video. uh, We will see that there is above average precipitation for that area expected for the November time frame. So I'm expecting nor'easters late, a a nor'easter pattern to set up. South of you guys, though, we do have tropical activity question mark, basically meaning we don't really know. But there's always the possibility, so that's basically the biggest thing going on this fall for those coastal regions, obviously because one hurricane could really be the biggest thing that happens all year for some regions in there. So it's a huge deal. Um, And then we have one more region there for New England, late fall. Again, I mentioned that earlier. With With the warmer than average conditions and average precipitation, we'll be expecting a little bit of a later fall. So if you made plans to go look at the fall foliage, you might want to do it a few days later or a week later, according to my forecast. Now we're going to get into the analog portion of this video, but before we do, we're going to look at NOAA's forecast. You can see they're expecting the warmer than normal conditions for the four corner state, the warmer conditions for New England, but they have warm everywhere. And this is kind of how NOAA usually goes in the long range. They're just calling for above average temperatures everywhere. And then once it gets to where it's one month away, they'll start calling for cold in some regions. And I'm expecting it to be in that 40% region or below that 40% region in the 33 to 40% region in that lightest shade of orange. That's really where they're going to most likely call for below average temperatures. Uh, and once it's a mo- again, once it's a monthly forecast, they will be calling for below average temperatures most likely. That's how it usually goes. Now, here's our temperature analogs for the entire three-month period. And you might be thinking this doesn't look quite like your forecast. Now, I did look at individually all these years, and there is some years that are holding this back from calling for a lot of cold in the east. And the major one is 2004. There, the September to November 2004 was quite warm. So if you take that analog year out, it's pretty cold in the east. 2014 to 2015 obviously was very cold. 2013 was very cold. And 2009 was iffy, but pretty cold. So yeah, I'm expecting colder than normal conditions for all of these regions that it's showing, except I think that the Great Lakes region down south of there, we're going to be seeing much colder than this is showing. Here's the individual month, September. You can see four corner states cold. Again, 2004 to 2005 is throwing this one off a lot. But we are seeing that cold for the southeast and that warm for the west. October, you see the cold in the central United States. Again, ignore the four corner states into California, Nevada. That's all because of 2004. And then in November, you can see the cold really gets unleashed. It has it pretty far south. But once I took 20, 2004 out, it showed it a lot further north than this. There was a very warm pattern in the northern United States, if you can't tell, in 2004. That's why it's throwing this off. But again, you take that out. I should have honestly saved the photo where I took it out, but if you take that out, it it's a lot further north than this. But there is cold, obviously, here you can see in November. Here's the precipitation forecast by NOAA. They have the warm or they have the above average precipitation there for Colorado and Kansas there that I have down through Texas, but they don't have it for the East Coast. Now let's look at my analogs here. You can see here's September to November. 2013, 2014, 2004, and 2009. And you can see for the southern United States, you, they have that above average precipitation. Hardly have it connecting with the coast, but I can say that it probably will if you put it under 0.5, but they don't have that, obviously. They don't have that. Sorry, my phone just fell, if you heard something. Uh, they do have that drier than normal conditions for northern California, though. 
So they there is some similarities here. Let's look at the individual months though. September, you can see they have Colorado and the four corner states and above average precipitation down through Texas and into the Gulf states. Then October, you can see those Gulf states really get going as well as Texas and up into the Great Lakes. These regions get really wet for October. And then once you head to November, you can see it connects with the coast and you can see that kind of nor'easter pattern likely setting in as we have one inch above average uh, here for the month of November from North Carolina into Virginia, Delaware, New Jersey, down in through Georgia. So you can see that they are calling for the nor'easter pattern to really set in like I was calling for. You can kind of see the similarities, but I tied in models, NOAA's forecast, and my analogs together, and this is the forecast that I came up with. I just wanted to show my analogs and what I kind of got from them. It's not always similar. My winter forecast obviously adds up a lot more with the analogs, but this this fall forecast, it kind of strays away from my analogs, but there is some similarities, and I did pull those away from them, and I hope you really enjoyed this video, and I really hope to see you in the next one too, so make sure you do subscribe if you haven't already. I would really like to hear if you guys like me showing the analogs there at the end. I feel like that's information. A lot of people are like, oh, where do you get this information from? Well, that's where I get it from, but it might be boring to some people. So let me know in the comments down below what you think of me showing analogs and Noah's forecast at the end of the seasonal monthly forecast. Anyway, guys, have a great day and I hope to see you in the next video.